Data-driven testing allows us to run one test using more than one set of data. The data drives our test and can be stored in different file formats. Some of the formats are CSV file, JSON file, Excel sheet, or database. Test Project supports data-driven testing and use a CSV file to hold the data as input. There are five steps to perform data-driven testing with Test Project. First, we create a test. Second, add parameters for the test. Third, we create a data source that stores the input test data. Fourth, connect the data source to the test. And fifth, we run the test. We start by having a test. I'm going to use this existing login test. I created this test in a previous video. It has six steps. Do you see application URL in step one? Application URL was parameterized by default. We are going to parameterize step three for name and step four for password. We can click these three vertical dots and select parameters or click the step. Scroll down to the keys section. Here's the hard coded value, Rex Jones II. Click the plus. We see project and test. Project allows us to use parameters for more than one test. Test lets us use parameters for only one test. The purpose of parameterization is to replace hard-coded static values with variables. Add a new parameter by clicking the plus symbol at the bottom. Erase the hard-coded value. This add parameter section supplies three fields, name, description, and value. Name will be name. Description will be enter name. Value is not required, so I will leave it blank. Click the add button. We see the hard coded value was replaced by the parameter. If you wanted to, you can combine a parameter with the hard coded value. For example, I can write doctor in front of the parameter. The value will be entered as doctor and the parameter name. When we are finished, click the check mark at the bottom, then click save. Now, step three no longer shows the hard coded value. Repeat the same steps for step four password. Click the step, scroll down to input parameters keys section. Erase one, two, three, four, five. Click the plus. Click the plus again at the bottom to add a new parameter. This time, name will it be password. Description, enter password. Value, one, two, three, four, five. We can hide the value by making it a secret. Then click add. Next, we click the check mark and click save. We can also add a parameter to a validation step. Step six validates the greeting name is correct. We see the validation section has contains Rex Jones the second. Select and remove the hard-coded value, then select name. Check mark to lock in the changes, then save. Steps three and step four are parameterized with input data. Step six has a validation parameter. Test project also allows output parameters. Click the three vertical dots, 
then select input output and here's the test output parameters the benefit of output parameters is when you want to get information from a test then store that information you can use that information for another test save and exit now let's create the data source go to these three horizontal dots then select data source template a csv file opens up the first row column is application url we don't need that step so we remove that default parameter let's add five default sets name is joe doe password is 54321 Jane Doe. Password is one, two, three, four, five. How about James Doe? Password nine, eight, seven, six, five. Janice Doe. Password is eight, seven, six, five, four. Last is John Doe. Password one, two, three, four, five. Only John Doe and Jane Doe will pass because they have the correct password. Save. At this point, we can go to data sources, then add a data file or add a new data source. Both options bring up this panel to add a new data source. We can also go to test to add a data source. Click the run button for login tests. Select the browser. Next. We can override the default input parameters in our CSV file by entering a name and password in these two fields or use the data source. Add a new data source brings up the same panel we saw when selecting data sources. Enter name, login, test data. Description is not required, but let's add name and password data set drag the test data then click create that's it now let's run our test you see I click run one time but there will be five iterations. One iteration for each data set. Go to reports. Select login test. We see one, three, and four failed, but five and two pass. Let's look at the summary report. Forty percent pass, sixty percent failed. Test results show each result, and failure report shows the iteration and step that failed with the screenshot. 
it failed because the password was invalid. Next, I'm going to show you how to perform cross browser testing. Books available in paperback, ebook, and PDF. All part one ebooks and PDF documents are free. Programming books for UFT. Programming books for Java. Here's the Selenium automation book. And TestNG. Subscribe to get notification of future videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.